As the growing and production of cannabis continues to gain popularity, we need to have considerations towards its long-term sustainability. Here on this Tobacco University video, the goal here is going to be to cover some of these major topics regarding cannabis sustainability for the long run. All right, let's look at cannabis sustainability considerations. So first off, cannabis cultivation is kind of emerging. With the start of the increase in popularity due to uh, produce cannabis plants, this is the time to ensure that it starts on the proper path. We're just in the early phases. Let's start on the proper path and go forward uh, in a sustainable manner. Growers need to be considering the sustainability of their practices, no matter the size of their operation. A lot of times it's like, oh, I'm a small operation, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, larger operations need to worry about it. Really, everyone needs to be considerate of the sustainability of agriculture in general. So correcting past problems. So uh, going looking back, maybe not necessarily this far back, uh, but seeing problems that have developed in other industries, the goal should be of that of prevention. Over, uh, over sustainability. All right, so let's get into cannabis sustainability considerations. So first off, cannabis cultivation is emerging. With the start of the increase in popularity to produce cannabis plants, this is the time to ensure that it starts and continues on the proper path. So we're kind of just coming into this kind of emerging industry. We correct the problems now and make it more sustainable now that can continue and be the path of the future. Growers need to be considering the sustainability of their practices, no matter the size of their operation. Many growers think, oh, I'm a small operation, I have to worry about it. Well, that's more for larger operations, and that's false. Everyone needs to be considering the sustainability of their practices, no matter how large or small of a growing operation that they have. So we want to correct past problems. So when we say past problems, we not, may not be going back as far as kind of Egyptian times, but seeing problems that have developed in other industries, the goal should be that of prevention uh, and overall sustainability. We want to correct problems before they become a major problem. Many see cannabis as its own category, and kind of in many ways it can be, uh, but considering large-scale production sustainability is important, even if you're only going to be a small indoor grower. You want to be considerate of all the environmental impacts that this plant may have. And you must think big picture. So many growers come from a small, under 10 plant growing perspective, or that's how they kind of perceive or see cannabis as being this kind of small. A couple plants go from there. However, growers need to consider scalability of their actions. If you're growing 10 plants, would you or could you implement the same practices? Again, given a limited budget, would that be possible with 10,000 plants? What would be the overall impact of that? Um, any little waste, you scale it up uh, from 10 plants, it becomes a much larger waste problem. Uh, so I'm going to use phosphorus here as just an example because uh, a lot of growers over fertilize their plants with phosphorus. So cannabis, as uh, many other plants, do need phosphorus. However, many growers are over applying it. And I say over applying phosphorus, they're over applying it without even realizing it, which is part of the problem. Phosphorus toxicity is not as obvious as nitrogen, so many growers are unknowingly over applying uh, phosphorus with no, at least visual, negative impacts. However, phosphorus is becoming a limiting uh, resource and is a fresh water contaminant. So you're using these heavy kind of bloom-based fertilizers to avoid any chance of yellowing the leaves. Well, that could be contributing to fresh water um, algal blooms and contamination of that water supply. So yelling leaves has a lot more implications potentially than just phosphorus deficiency. It could be disease, could be a whole host of other things, uh, but growers are often way over adding their phosphorus. Now because you get into toxicity levels, because the plants visually don't show a lot of negative effects, growers are very apt to do it because they don't even realize they're doing it at the time. And you don't want to waste a limited resource. So phosphorus is a limited resource. Cannabis growers need to be aware of how much phosphorus their plants need and how much phosphorus they can, their plants can uptake and, and how that compares to the amount that they're applying. Many are over applying and do not realize the waste and potential negative impacts on the environment they could be having. So it's very important to have that education there to realize that there is negative implications of over applying phosphorus. 
So why do we need to transform the phosphorus use in the global food system? So this could even goes beyond just looking at cannabis. But phosphorus is basically food. It's needed for a whole host of plants. Uh, the growing food demand uh, is equal to growing uh, phosphorus demand. There's only a finite amount of phosphorus. And this is going to lead to potential for geopolitical risks insufficient global food system uh, to distribute that food, uh, increased fertilizer cost as the phosphorus that we're getting to in some of the mines is becoming less pure, and there's really no guidelines or no regulations of phosphorus. And to give you an idea of this kind of geopolitical risk, five countries control almost 90% of the global phosphate reserves. Eight countries control uh, account for about 65% of the glo global sulfuric acid production. So only five controlling 90%, um, that could be a major area um, of concern with China and Morocco being the greatest percentages as far as countries go. We also need to think when we're talking about cannabis, waste disposal. And this includes all products that are required for plant production. Some are uh, disposable and some are short-term used. Others may be longer-term use, but in the end, they all must be disposed of in some way. Just consider where the products you purchase end up and just have that mindset or that consideration for anything that you're utilizing as part of your plant production. Uh, so lastly here, just to focus on one thing, is looking at artificial lighting. We want to be considerate of the physical components of that artificial lighting. This is the ballast, the bulbs, the cords, as well as other lighting equipment, and also the electrical needs. All lights consume power, so where is this power coming from? Now, if you're looking at growing outdoor cannabis, you might think, well, I don't need lighting. But we want to be thinking of potentially your weed control options, your plastic consumption, um, and things like that. So no system is completely free of any waste products. Good to have an idea of where that's going to end up, how you're going to utilize that, and how you're going to grow your plant in an efficient as well as a sustainable way.